Um, I'm here to uh, present uh, the uh, OpenRC, an alternative uh, init system and service manager. So, uh, so one question, who cares about uh, the init system? Great, great. That, 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 that's why you're coming here. And uh, who has gone through the init system debate around 2014? Great, great. Thank you. And who likes shell scripts? <laughs> nice. I, I think I, 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 I'm meeting with the correct audience. So something about me. I'm a long-term uh, Debian user since the age of Woody. And then uh, I also involved in uh, Gen2. And uh, right now I'm applying to be a uh, Debian developer. So from my uh, point of view of the patience of skills required, uh, the Debian and Gen2 has uh, a kind of this relationship. So I'm climbing up, so finally to be a Debian developer, which made me very excited. Hopefully uh, this meeting can give me a boost of that. Okay. So let's come to uh, the topic of today. Um, what is OpenRC? Um, basically, OpenRC has uh, been grown from the Gen2 community as an answer uh, to, uh, to, for the call to design a uh, modern uh, init system. It should be compatible with the traditional scripts as uh, much as possible. And, uh, uh, basically, OpenRC is written in C and uh, shell scripts. And th that makes uh, the system uh, quite simple and uh, very much uh, portable. So if you want to install uh, OpenRC on Debian, you can copy this command. It basically uh, installs uh, systemv uh, init and OpenRC and uh, removes the uh, systemd sysv replacement and uh, uh, with this single command. And after the reboot, you will be powered by uh, OpenRC. So that's all for the talk. <laughs> well, not really. Um, so I, I think the audience is not quite convinced why OpenRC is useful, uh, at least for some cases. Well, I think it's a good, uh, uh, to answer this question, it is, uh, um, needed to consider, reconsider the good practice of a free uh, software. Um, I, from my point of view, uh, it should be uh, respect the Unix philosophy. And it should be easy to tinker and easy to understand and straightforward to hack. And it should provide some uh, modern uh, or standard feature set that everybody take for granted. And as a benchmark, I think a software that is success successful is usually used when uh, in an un uh, not anticipated uh, by the developers. So let me show you that OpenRC meets these standards. So first, uh, OpenRC has a very flexible design. Uh, because the services are uh, defined by shell scripts, and the shell script is the most natural language to invoke commands because we, we use shells to invoke commands uh, every day. And uh, so therefore, this gives the OpenRC a very flexible design. Uh, first, uh, an example is uh, like this. Uh, it can be very uh, decorative. Uh, for example, you uh, give an, a description, uh, you give a, a, a file and command, and uh, the, some extra arguments, and uh, it will become a service. You can start and stop and uh, ma make it uh, uh, run automatically on, on reboot. Or it can be uh, very uh, much like a script uh, where you define uh, some functions and uh, you execute uh, commands uh, inside those functions. Uh, uh, by the way, this is for the dependency, and uh, the, mo uh, the more uh, Conventional example is uh, in the start function. Uh, for example, it is uh, to mount some uh, kernel uh, file systems. Uh, you can just write the uh, shell script uh, directly. Or uh, we can uh, support the uh, Debian 
uh, Linux uh, standard based uh, Inner scripts, uh, which is uh, why we ported uh, this system uh, to Debian. Um, secondly, uh, OpenRC is a very uh, a small tool, uh, to be honest, and uh, it is uh, very simple uh, to understand. So I think uh, the model is when you are in doubt uh, of the behavior, just read. Uh, the code. Uh, for example, uh, in the past uh, case, I've shown uh, this decorative uh, uh, example, and this decorative example can, uh, is defined in some uh, shell script. And uh, this shell script can be read directly, uh, for example, uh, on uh, the Debian system, it is uh, in this file, and we can see, okay, so we, if we, if we uh, define the PID file, it will use the PID file here. If you, we define some other arguments, it will be used a pass to start stop daemon. So it is a, a very uh, simple to understand, and uh, it is a, actually a good educative uh, piece of software where we can learn for uh, system programming and uh, uh, shell script hacking. And also, uh, OpenRC, uh, thanks to its simpleness, it's very easy to hack. And uh, it, it, I think this is the, the central uh, spirit of uh, free software. And uh, because the code base is very light, and uh, you can easy, uh, very easily to find uh, the solution uh, to satisfy your need. And uh, because the OpenRC respects the backward compatibility, so your hacks uh, are, uh, will be long-lived. Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, initially, uh, the Debian uh, LSB scripts has some weak uh, dependencies. Uh, and these dependencies uh, uh, make some uh, dependency loop, uh, which is not originally supported. Uh, by uh, Gen 2 version OpenRC. So in order to port uh, the OpenRC to Debian, so we uh, implemented a dependency handler uh, to accept the loops in the dependency. And uh, it has been working well for uh, four years uh, for this hack, and uh, uh, the patch hasn't been changed uh, at all. And uh, you, it works for every new version of OpenRC. And uh, uh, because it's a very simple tool, so it does one thing and does it correctly. And uh, uh, for example, it manages the, the service dependency and as well as the uh, start and stop of uh, the services. It can be in foreground or uh, in background. So uh, recently, uh, we have a trend to supervise uh, the services. So if we put the uh, uh, daemon in foreground, uh, it is easier uh, to be supervised. And uh, so that uh, when the daemon crashes, it can be uh, restarted uh, and, uh, and, and uh, to minimize the downtime. And also, uh, the OpenRC is uh, flexible. It can be interplayed with uh, uh, C group or some alternative uh, init programs like uh, S6 and run it. They are also very uh, nice and uh, simple uh, service supervisors. You can also do many things with OpenRC. For example, you, you're not necessarily uh, using the uh, UDEV. Uh, you can use uh, some MDEV from the BusyBox, or you can, you're not tied to the SysV uh, init. Uh, you can use some alternative uh, init programs, uh, or write, write some init by yourself. Uh, as long as it starts uh, OpenRC, or it calls OpenRC. Or even OpenRC can be uh, used in, as a normal user and started by some Chrome tab or some uh, menu, uh, manual uh, execution. Uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't care. So, as long as it gets executed, it's executed perfectly. <laughs> and uh, the other point I want to uh, cover 
is that the OpenRC's philosophy is that it's evolutional. Uh, the users has the ultimate words on the development. Uh, for example, uh, the, there are many power users uh, say, uh, giving uh, opinions to the developers and uh, sometimes they do a very good hack and they, they become uh, developers, uh, developers by themselves. And uh, the, the, the group is uh, very friendly to speak with and uh, to work with. Uh, for example, when we, are, when we were adopting uh, OpenRC to Debian, uh, there has been some name conflicts. For example, the run script and uh, the RC are uh, in conflict with existing uh, Debian packages, and the upstream uh, acted very quickly to change their executables to uh, OpenRC-specific uh, names, and uh, we were very appreciated with that. And finally, uh, what, what I think is uh, very important for software freedom and for Debian as the universal operating system, the OpenRC uh, is not uh, Linux only. It supports, uh, as I mentioned, as long as it started, it started. So it supports uh, alternative uh, kernels. For example, this uh, GNU uh, K3BSD, kernel free BSD. Uh, this is a screenshot. Um, if I have my uh, laptop, I can show you a live version of that. And uh, also uh, GNU herd. Uh, uh, this one, the herd is not that, that very colorful. So you can, but you can see this line is starting the uh, the GNU uh, the GNU kernel. And uh, if you want to. Uh, if you want to get more information about OpenRC, you can uh, get this tracker. It's already in Debian, and it's easy uh, to be installed. And uh, the, the popcorn uh, graph is uh, like this. Uh, we are constantly uh, gaining users. And uh, hopefully, uh, after this talk, I can uh, see an upward trend of this uh, popcorn. So, uh, I want to uh, convey some messages uh, to the audience. Uh, uh, first, uh, OpenRC is, uh, ha offers some modern uh, features. Uh, it is a, a feature for unit system and service manager. And uh, it supports some um, uh, the features we, we take in for defaults. Uh, for example, the service dependencies, uh, the process super uh, supervision, and uh, fast boot of the uh, systems, uh, but these features are not came with uh, a downside of uh, not understandable system. It's still keeping to be uh, very simple and uh, to understand and to hack. Uh, also, uh, it is driven by a friendly uh, community and uh, also the users have the final word of where it goes. And it is easy to be installed on Debian. Uh, I can give you a, a, like a seven second demonstration of how to install it. Uh, if, you, you want, uh, if you want that demo, uh, talk to me uh, after my talk. So finally, I, I'd like to thank uh, the supporters of OpenRC. It has been uh, a long history uh, before starting, before the a uh, long debate of init system. Uh, Roger, uh, who's already uh, been uh, retired, I, I think, has uh, laid down the ground uh, breaking work. And Thomas and Adam uh, has been supervising our uh, work. And uh, Dimitri and uh, Bill has uh, uh, gave virus uh, contributions. And uh, the, hurt, uh, the hurt patch has not been uh, possible uh, if not were uh, Svent and uh, Giburi. So uh, I'd like to thank my uh, colleagues. And uh, that's all. Uh, hopefully uh, this uh, has uh, get you some interest in OpenRC, and I'm open for questions. Or debates. Uh, so this, this sounds great. Um, so I should say, I'm Ian Jackson. I have somehow ended up 
being in charge of SysV in it in Debian. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really want to be in charge of it, but mm -hmm. uh, nobody else was taking care of it. Um, this is this is cool. Uh, do you have like a like a transition plan? I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. it, like realistically, it's not likely to um, become the default anytime soon. But mm -hmm. um, because you have these service files, we need packages to have these service files in. Is there a way um, to is there a way to do that like compatibly to like transition from mm -hmm. let's just say mm -hmm. uh, let us start easy. Um, can we transition to a situation where SysV in its support and OpenRC support is somehow done in the same way? These little shell scripts seem quite nice. Maybe we mm -hmm. could make do the, is it sure. possible to interpret these shell scripts with with, with SysV in it? Sure. Um, I, I think it's doable. Uh, in a similar way as the LSB scripts. And uh, the LSB scripts took, uh, I think, one afternoon to hack up. So I expect uh, at most the system B uh, units compatible layer would take one week's work. Right. Um, mm. So I, I, I do think that's a very uh, nice way to go forward, okay. to move so, forward. So I mean, I'm I'm un, I don't like really like SysV in it very much. I I, mm -hmm. I would not like to switch either. to something with better service supervision. Um, there mm -hmm. are reasons why I'm not using the competition, mm -hmm. which you have like <laughs> deployed in your slides very very well. Yes. Um, Here. Yes. Yeah. All mm -hmm. of these. Um, mm -hmm. No. No. At the bottom of the slides, we have all the anti patterns. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm not using mm -hmm. using the the competition that we shall not name. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but, but, you know, I have all these, like, I currently have a lot of SysV in its scripts, obviously. Mm -hmm. They come in all the packages. Are we, are we going to be sending, are you going to be sending mm -hmm. patches to package maintainers? Have you tried that? Is that, is that working well? Um, I, I haven't, because I'm using uh, Debian Stable. So right. the trend has not came to me yet. But I believe in Buster I will be, uh, meet some packages that I like that doesn't ship the uh, init scripts anymore. Right. So, so, so far, you're basically moment, using the init scripts. That's the, as, right, you're using the SysV init scripts. Yes. So, so far, all the services I use uh, ships the uh, LSB scripts, which works perfectly. OK. So, but the upcoming trend is that the maintainers are, are uh, removing those scripts have you seen that anywhere? If you have examples, talk to me afterwards. Okay, okay. I, I, I've saw some uh, bug, bug reports, but uh, I, I can't uh, remember it okay. immediately. Um, but so but maybe, I do maybe think... Maybe somebody else... Sorry. Yeah, you know. But I do think the compatible layer for system B unit is a superior way to move forward. Right, quite possibly. Uh, does anybody else have any more questions? <laughs> Short question. Well, thank you. Thank you.